Hello everybody, I'm Matt Ruddick from Model Aviation Magazine, and today I've got a really cool new radio to show you guys from Free Sky RC, the Horus X10S. Now the X10S is the newest flagship radio from FreeSky that has a rock solid radio link that you're used to from their previous radios, combined with an unmistakably premium high quality feel. Now users of the FreeSky Tyrannus line of radios like the X9D or the QX7 are going to be really impressed by the upgrade in construction and quality of materials. But it's not all just for looks. The X10S features the new MC12P gimbals. These are all CNC 10 ball bearing hall sensor gimbals that provide high resolution and accuracy with your stick inputs. Now, I wasn't sure that I'd notice a huge difference between these and say like the M7 or the M9 hall sensor gimbals that were released for the Tyrannus series. But boy, was I wrong. These gimbals are incredibly smooth and really gave me a precision that I just haven't found before in other radios. Now the ergonomics are pretty comfortable to me as a pinch flyer, but I think thumb flyers are gonna feel right at home on this as well. Uh, the stick ends are also adjustable, and these grip pads on the back, these feel really nice in the hand as well. Now I'll be honest here guys, it's really tough for me to overstate how nice this radio feels in the hand. Now you've got eight switches on the radio, six three-way, one two-way, and one momentary switch. You also have three potentiometer dials with these nice knurled knobs on the top. And you'll also find two slider dials on the side, similar to that on the Tyrannus X9D. Now the most obvious physical choice that was made was to include this giant 480 by 272 pixel LCD screen. This thing is big, it's bright, it's full of real estate to give you all the flight telemetry data that you're gonna need. Also your model information, anything else you might wanna see on that screen, there's space for it. The screen is dimmable and can also be assigned to one of these three switches on the top. And I actually ended up setting the screen to go to sleep after about 10 seconds to help save on my battery life, which is something I'm gonna talk a little bit more about later. And after all, most of the time, I'm either looking up into the sky or I've got FPV goggles on, so I didn't need to have the screen running all that much anyway. But while the X10S supports OpenTX, which many FreeSky users are used to, uh, this radio comes shipped with the new FROS. Now I get it, a lot of folks are gonna to wanna to immediately flash OpenTX to this guy, but just let me stop you for a second. Perhaps the thing that I was the most surprised by on this radio was the operating system. It's incredibly intuitive, it's easy to use, and it's very straightforward. I've always had a bit of a soft spot for the ease of use of some other radio operating systems, but the FROS has really pulled in line with some of the big manufacturers out there, and you're losing very little of the versatility you have with OpenTX. Many of the features and functions are also present here. I would really encourage you to give it a shot. Now, something else I thought was really interesting here is that there are two internal antennas along the top of the case of the radio, in addition to this standard antenna and SMA connector on the top. So what does that mean to us? Well, if you'd rather not have this antenna sticking out of the top of your radio for whatever reason, whether it be portability, uh, maybe it broke, you can turn that antenna off in the software, remove this from the top of the radio, and rely only on the internal antennas inside. And now while I tested this feature, I didn't notice any noticeable reduction in RSSI signal, but I would encourage you to perform your own range test at your field to make sure that you don't have any outside variables that could interfere with that link. Now let's talk about the bad, because look, there's always something that could be better. Uh, and to be fair, there's not a lot that I dislike about the X10S, but there are definitely some nitpicks that I can make. Uh, the biggest of which is gonna be the battery. Now I've become very used to being able to swap out the battery on my QX7 while I'm at the field. And I became incredibly concerned to learn that the X10S has a completely internal battery. You have a 2600 milliamp hour lithium ion pack inside with its own charging circuit. Uh, so you end up charging through this barrel jack in the bottom. Now there's no question that this has caused me to change how I prepare for flights. Before, as long as I knew that I had a charged battery in my, in my bag, I wasn't really too worried about the state of the radio. Well now, I'm recharging my radio when I recharge my flight packs. During my time with it, I found about six hours of flight time is what I would get out of it, and about 90 minutes or so to recharge. So you gotta keep that in mind. Now of course, if you insist on changing packs at the field, you only need to remove these four screws in the back of the radio. You simply take that off, take the case apart, and the, the battery can be hot swapped right there. Now my only other complaint is this. This is where you connect the neck strap. And while it feels solid, it's nice and secure, it's crazy small. 
In fact, apart from the strap that came with the radio, none of my other neck straps would fit. And with the extra weight of this radio, a neck strap is gonna be really nice to have. Now in the past, I've actually added a key ring loop uh, and attached to this so that I could attach any strap to it that I wanted. But look, it's not the end of the world. It's something that I would definitely like to see changed in future revisions, however. So other than what I've already mentioned, the X10S features 16 to 32 channels, speech alerts, full telemetry, JR style module bay, wireless trainer, and a USB port for software upgrades and simulator use. Now look, this isn't an inexpensive radio for most pilots. The X10S retails for about $430, and while that is the most expensive radio in the FreeSky lineup, I really feel like you're getting a lot of radio for your money. And when you compare it feature to feature with its competitors, you'll find you're getting a pretty good value. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed our look at the FreeSky X10S transmitter. You'll be able to read my full in-depth review in an upcoming issue of Model Aviation, so keep an eye out for that. And in the meantime, feel free to comment, like, subscribe down below to stay up to date with all the awesome content that we bring right to you. We'll see you guys next time.